be. I'm sure that many of you have heard or maybe even quoted Bible verses yourself on faith. Like, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Or that God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Or without faith, it is impossible to please God. You know, faith can do a lot of things in our lives when we continue to allow it to grow and develop. And you know what else? Jesus meets the need of everyone, Gentile or Jew, rich or poor, leader or follower, ruler or servant. He bridges the gaps, prejudices, and divisions between men. But the one essential thing in securing his help is faith. And in today's message titled, A Lesson on Great Faith, we will see how the great faith of a soldier stirred up the great power of Jesus. But before we move on to our text, please bow with me in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, Lord, we come to you in the holy and in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that at the conclusion of this message as children of God, that we will be encouraged to exercise our faith in you through your Son, Jesus Christ. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture for today's message is found in Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. But for our reading, I'll only read verses 6 and 7. And the word of the Lord reads on this wise. Then Jesus went with them. When he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Amen. A lesson on great faith. There's a story about a man who, after he became a millionaire, went back to his local church one night to share his testimony about what, about what God had done for him. See if I can try to paraphrase what he said. And he started out by saying, tonight I stand before you as a multi-millionaire. And he took them back to the Sunday that he had heard the pastor preaching about faith, which was a turning point in his life on faith. And after the message, he went on to tell him about how a missionary spoke to the congregation about his work on the mission field and asked for a donation. And so the man speaking, he said, so as I sat there in my seat, the spirit of the Lord told me to get up, get up, get up, get up right now. And go put it all in. I mean, you go put in everything. Don't even hold back nothing for yourself to live on. Get up and go put it all in. And he said, when I heard that, I knew that I had to make a decision right then and there. And so what I did, I obeyed the spirit. Got up out of my seat, walked up to the offering basket, and I put in everything I had. I mean, I put in the whole lot, stock, and barrel. Yes, I gave the whole dollar. I believe, I believe I'm a multi-millionaire today because I trusted God and I gave all that I had. And God blessed my decision that day. I mean, he blessed it. After the man finished his testimony, he strutted back to his seat full of pride. The whole congregation, they were moved by his great faith. And, you know, back then to give all that he had to the cause of Christ. When the man took his seat, there was a little old lady sitting next to him on the pew. And she leaned over and said to him, she said, I dare you do it again. And now what this little old lady knew was it's much easier to step out on faith and give up everything when all you have is one dollar. But it takes great faith to give up all you have when you're in possession of millions. And faith is an important aspect of life. Because faith is what helps us to get through the most difficult and challenging times of our lives by giving us the strength that we need to hold on to in times of weakness. Faith at its core is deeply rooted 
in the expectation of good things to come. And even though at times life can be hard, it is our hope anchored in faith that helps us to look above our circumstances, believing that things will eventually get better. So when times are tough, it's essential to have faith because everything in life becomes so much easier to get through when we exercise our faith. And in our text today is the story of a centurion soldier who sought out Jesus in faith. And his story is a lesson on great faith for all believers in Christ because it gives three important facts about faith. And they are, first, the motivation of great faith. Second, the humility of great faith. Third, the reward of great faith. Now in verse 1 of chapter 7, we see when Jesus finishes his sermon on the mount that he along with his newly appointed apostles went to Capernaum, which was the base of operation for his earthly ministry. And that station in Capernaum was a centurion soldier along with the men under his command. Now a centurion soldier is a Roman officer who is in command of 100 soldiers. And verse 2 says, and a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And so we see here in verse 2 that the centurion soldier had a servant who was sick with the palsy. Now this dreadful disease of the palsy, it was incurable and also played death on the living. Let me tell you how. The palsy is a paralysis that attacks and renders the body helpless by gradually killing it. The palsy destroys the nervous system. And the palsy causes your arms and legs to become motionless and your mind to become severely weakened. The centurion soldier servant was in a dead-end situation with no way out. Let me be candid with you. He was extremely sick and about to die. An old man death was getting ready to invade the ranks once again to carry his spores back to the tomb. But because of his love for his son, the centurion cared for and personally looked after him, even though he meant nothing, nothing to the rest of society. And this takes us to our first outline, which is the motivation. Great faith. The centurion soldier's servant was dear to him. And his servant was prized, honored, and esteemed. And it would have been easier for the centurion to just turn his back on him and let him die. But he didn't because the motivation of his great faith was love. The fact that the centurion soldier had enough compassion to reach down to help a person who meant nothing to society was bound to give him favor with the Lord. Now the centurion soldier in our text was unlike most Roman soldiers during that time. And he was a man of faith who loved Israel and their God. The centurion even built the Jews a synagogue and some say out of his own pocket. And we see his kindness in his treatment of his servant. And he cares for him tenderly while he is sick and he takes pains to have him restored to good health. So it's evident that the motivation of the centurion soldier, great faith was love. And verse 3 says, when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And this verse lets us know that the centurion soldier had heard of Jesus. And first of all, he was in a place to hear about the Lord. He was where he could hear the message of hope. And when he heard it, he responded by believing what he heard. Now, the centurion soldier was not the only one who had heard of Jesus. Don't you remember how there was a woman with an issue of blood 12 long years who heard about Jesus. Then there was a blind man, uh, Bartimaeus, who sat by the Jericho Highway begging, who heard about Jesus. And there was also a certain nobleman whose son was sick in Capernaum, the same city as the centurion soldier in our text, who also heard about Jesus. And sure enough, all of these individuals who heard about the healing 
power of Jesus and believed his report were all healed and made whole by Jesus himself simply because of their faith. Now the testimonies of these individuals who heard about Jesus should let us know that we also need to get ourselves in a place to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then once we hear it, we ought to believe it. And once we start hearing and believing it, we need to start acting on it by living it. Then to live it, we must keep ourselves exposed to the gospel by continuously going to where the word of God is preached and taught. Because faith does come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. The centurion soldier heard about Jesus. And then he solicited a delegation of the elders of the Jews. Those who he thought were the favorites of heaven. And he sent these men out on an errand to go and summon Jesus to come to his house and heal his servant. And it's evident that the centurion wasn't focused on the condition of the patient. But instead, he looked to the power of the physician. So he sent the elders of the Jews to ask Jesus to come and heal his servant. Then in verses 4 and 5, we see that just as the centurion soldier requested them, the Jewish elders, they sought after Jesus. When they reached him, they begged and pleaded with him, pointing out that the centurion was worthy of his help. And as they spoke with Jesus, they bear witness that the centurion loved their people and their nation and that he had also built them a synagogue. The centurion soldier, he didn't just tell them about his love for them with his words, but he showed his love for them in word and in deed with his action. And this shows us again that the motivation for his great faith was love. Jesus responded with genuine love for others is the motivation. Now, after the elders of the Jews finished their appeal, Jesus took off with them en route to the centurion's house to heal his servant. And then verses 6 and 7 of our text said, Then Jesus went with them. And anytime Jesus is going with you, that's a very good trip. And when he was there, not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself. For I'm not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. And wherefore neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. It is here that the humility of the centurion soldier, it comes into view. And this leads us to our second outline, which is the humility of great faith. Second outline, the humility of great faith. Now these verses answer the question as to why the centurion soldier didn't go himself to get Jesus. And it was because he felt unworthy to approach the Lord. Why? Because he was a Gentile who was considered unclean and rejected in the eyes of most. And the centurion soldier, he thought that Jesus would also reject him and count him unworthy. The centurion soldier was courteous and he was humble, but he felt his lack of unworthiness, which is the humility of great faith. The centurion soldier, he knew that he was unworthy to go meet Jesus. And not only was he unworthy to meet Jesus, but he recognized that he was also unworthy to have Jesus come meet him. So when he noticed that Jesus was not far from his house, instead of setting his house in order, he took a deeper look within himself at his personal unworthiness. And as he lowered himself in unworthiness, he elevated Christ in holiness. He was motivated by love in his pursuit of Christ's help. But now he's remarkably humble in how he approaches the Savior. And the reason is is because he sees his unworthiness in the presence of Jesus Christ's holiness. And so he had second thoughts about Jesus coming to his house and he didn't want him anywhere near that place. And so he decided that he better pull together a second delegation quickly and send them to tell Jesus, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I'm not worthy 
that thou shouldest enter under my roof. And the centurion, he wanted to arrest the progression of Jesus' uh, of Jesus because he felt that his house was unclean and unfit for him to enter. When I say that his house was unclean, that's not talking about dirty dishes and unmade beds. And we're talking about his home being unholy and defiled according to the Jewish law. And he really wanted the master's journey stopped. Now that's how it is sometimes with some of us because of some of the activity that go on in our home. We don't want Jesus to get too close either. And so when we feel him moving in closer through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, we try to stop his progress. And so, you know, because we might just have to give up something like some of our earthly vices. When you try to move yourself and family in closer to the Lord, you can rest assured that the enemy will try to come into your home any way he can to arrest the, prog the progress of the Lord in your life. Look at this. When the centurion sent the elders out, and he didn't say, my servant is not worthy for you to come. But he said, I'm not worthy. And he recognized that he had a twofold problem. First, he was not worthy for Christ to come under his roof. That's the first problem. And then the second problem was he felt that he was not worthy to go out and stand directly before Christ. But although his self-acknowledged unworthiness was pressing down on him like a heavy burden, he soared high in his faith and his unworthiness showed the humility of his great faith. And he expressed his faith in his message to Jesus when he said, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Here the centurion soldier expresses confidence that it was sufficient for Jesus to just simply speak a word. Just where he was. He didn't have to go no word. Only thing he had to do was speak a word and his servant would be healed. Now, being a centurion over me, he knew that all Jesus had to do was to issue an order and it would be carried out, whether he was present or not. And so the centurion, he had the faith that if Jesus would just speak a word, that would fix everything. The healing would take place because there's power in his word, even without his presence. When Jesus speaks a word, distance is no hindrance to his power. When Jesus speaks a word, it's Expands our physical barriers. It releases the power of heaven. It changes the course of nature as he pleases. When Jesus speaks a word, the sick are made healthy and death releases its dead. And when Jesus speaks a word, it rectifies disorder, repairs decay, and rebuilds the broken down walls of human life. There's no doubt about it. When Jesus speaks, there's power, power, power in his word. Then in verse 8, the centurion soldier said, For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth this. Notice here that the centurion soldier, he started to draw a parallel between Jesus Christ and himself. And so he switched to convey his message to Jesus coming from his military pedigree, saying, I am also a man set under authority. Now what he's saying here is that he's an officer under the Roman Empire, commissioned by the superior authority of Caesar. And he recognized in Jesus that he was also under authority. But his authority was not from some world power, but was divinely commissioned by God the Father who made heaven and earth. Jesus, the Son of God, was anointed, appointed, qualified, and sent to carry out God the Father, divine plan for mankind. So the centurion looked upon Jesus as being duly authorized and commissioned with the power to carry out his work. Now let's do a, a, a quick review of what's been discussed up to this point. First was the motivation of the centurion soldier's great faith, which was love. Second was the humility of his great faith, which was unworthiness. And so now we're up to the third and final outline for this text, which is the reward of great faith.
the reward of great faith. Verses 9 and 10 say, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. They that were sent, returning to the house, found a servant whole that had been sick. And notice how Jesus says, I have not found so great faith. And this implies that Jesus is looking for faith. The Lord is looking for people like this centurion who know that Jesus Christ is Lord and who know how to come to him in simple faith and say, you say the word Lord and it shall be done. You know, Jesus marvels when great faith is exercised and for the centurion soldier, the reward of his great faith was healing for his servant. Look at this. As you read through the gospel, you will see many times how great expressions of faith in Jesus Christ caused him to stop and enthusiastically respond. For instance, in Matthew chapter 15, when a woman of Canaan cried out to him saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thy son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. And Jesus gladly responded to her persistent faith because it was motivated by her great love for her child. And then in Mark chapter 2, there was the paralyzed man who four friends tried to get him into the house where Jesus was and so he could be healed. But because of the crowd, because of the press of the crowd, their only point of entry was through the roof. And so they broke through it. Then lowered the man down in his bed to Jesus. And when Jesus saw the bold initiative of faith, he completely healed the man. Jesus takes notice of bold faith. He takes notice. There are bold acts of faith like these and many more that are recorded in the Bible. And he is a rewarder of great faith. Now in closing, let me remind you that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And just like he had the power to heal the centurion soldier's servant, he has the power to meet our need. However, there's one prerequisite, and that is faith. We must believe that Jesus Christ can meet each and every one of our needs. And we must also remember first the motivation of great faith. The centurion soldier, he showed how his great faith was motivated by love. Great faith cares deeply for people. So if we want to activate our faith, a good starting point is to have eyes with love, ready to see the need. Hands of love, ready to reach out and help in times of need. And a heart of love and compassion for those in need. Second, the humility of great faith. Centurion soldier took a deeper look within himself, saw that the humility of his faith was that he was not worthy for Jesus to come under his roof, nor was he worthy to approach Jesus directly. But because of his great faith, he knew that the words of Jesus were sufficient to accomplish the healing of his servant. So he asked Jesus to just speak a word for his servant to be healed. Third, the reward of great faith. Because of the centurion soldier great faith, his faith was rewarded by Jesus instantly, healing his servant with his word. This centurion, he showed us how great faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. When our faith expresses great confidence in Jesus' power and authority, it captures his attention. And so, don't be disheartened or discouraged by what you see or do not see. You just step out on your faith today, just like the centurion soldier. He had faith that was centered on Jesus Christ. Faith that Jesus could meet his need. Faith that when Jesus speaks, his commands will be obeyed. Faith that Jesus is the sovereign Lord and all power is subject to him. And his great faith was the kind of faith that God rewards. Now, for believers in Christ, faith is the result of believing the gospel, which is the good news of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. It is that faith that transforms us from focusing our eyes on the problems and situations of this life to focusing on that which is spiritual and beyond this life, that which we cannot 
See, so if you're a non-believer who wants this kind of faith, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. That's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And today is a good day. Today is a mighty good day for you to receive your gift of salvation by simply placing your faith in his son, Jesus Christ, and confessing him as your Lord and Savior. Great faith stirs up the power of Jesus Christ and the centurion soldier in our text. He gave us a lesson on great faith. A lesson on great faith. Thank you, and may God bless you. Please bow with me in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this story about the centurion soldier in Luke chapter 7. And we thank you for showing us his great faith. And not only that, we thank you now for showing us how you stand ready to reward great faith. You are rewardable faith. God, we thank you for that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have a prayer request, like to invite the Lord into your life, or if you have any comment, please send me a Facebook message or use the contact us option available on our website at pmbcfellowship.org. You can also contact me with your questions on today's message. To give your tithes, offerings, and donations, please visit PMBC Fellowship and click the Give button on the top right of the page. Follow the instructions from there. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Thanks again for tuning in. And remember, great faith in Jesus is motivated by sincere love for others. It is humble in the asking and is confident in the power of Jesus Christ. Now I look forward to you viewing our live feed on next Sunday at 11 a.m. Right here at the pastor's desk or our live feed on YouTube at PMBC Space Fellowship or seeing you in person for Sunday morning worship on site at Providence Missionary Baptist Church in Montalba, Texas, being in the quarters with the CDC guideline. Until then, I want you to take care and may God bless you.